Hello, everyone. Welcome back. And thank you for joining me today. My guest today is Hillary Lee Han, and she has had a couple of spiritual experiences as well as she is a past life and between life regressionist. So she is a certified hypnotherapist that has also trained in past life regression and between lives regression. She works with people all over the world to help them release stuck emotions and patterns in their lives. She enjoys specializing in spiritual hypnosis where she takes people through their past lives and then, if they want, into their between lives. She owns State of Mind Hypnosis and Training Center where she also teaches self-hypnosis and hypnosis for removing blocks to creativity. I will have the link in the description as well as her email, her website, and her YouTube. So thank you for joining us, Hillary. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you for having me on your your YouTube channel. I love it. I love your channel so much. Oh, thank you. I've really been looking forward to this. So would you like to start out by sharing your two spiritual experiences? Yeah. So um, I've had a number of spiritual experiences. The first two that sort of really got the ball rolling for me. Um, The first one was when I was um, much younger in my 20s. And it was so both of them was were when I was sleeping, it was in the early morning hours. And so the first one, I was suddenly uh, zooming towards this light through this tunnel of <laughs> and there was beautiful you know it was really dark but there was colors purples and reds and uh all, all these beautiful colors but very dark yet light at the same time I don't even know how to explain that properly but um I was zooming towards this light and in the background I could just hear choirs singing like this beautiful choir voice singing and it got louder and louder and louder and then I it stopped and I just you know you hear Andy years talking about slamming back into their body that's what it felt like at least um and so I woke up so years later I'm gonna guess around 10 years later or something I had another experience where again it was the early morning hours and I was sleeping and I was on this uh, beach and I could feel water kind of coming up and over my legs and then washing out kind of like waves and I um, was looking upwards and this light just kind of engulfed me and I moved I could feel myself moving up and up into this light and at that moment I thought you know am I if I'm dying I'm (laughs) totally okay with this because the feeling that feeling of being connected and that love like the love was just beyond anything it was describable um And then I had this quick little thought (laughs) that I don't want to leave my husband. I don't want to leave him. And so as soon as I had that thought, again, I came back, slammed into my body and, um, and yeah, and then woke up. I still for a few minutes had that elated feeling, very connected. Um, But yeah, those two very short experiences, um, you know, in my 20s and in my early 30s, just kind of, yeah, got the ball rolling for me on this spiritual path. Wow. So what impact did those have on your life? Did they have an impact? I, yeah, absolutely. Um, It really got me into looking and researching into near-death experiences, (laughs) just like Mm -hmm. yourself. And I was consuming information on NDEs, um, uh, a lot of information on NDEs. And uh, also one of the pivotal books for me was Anita Morjani's Dying to Be Me. That really, um, that really turned the corner for me, um, was, you know, looking up NDEs, getting involved with IAMs, stuff like that. And so, um, yeah, that kind of put me on the path 
towards the NDE part of stuff that I do. Yeah. Yeah. And as we were talking before I started recording, you and I do have a lot in common because I went through that myself in my, I guess it was my late twenties. For me, I started just diving into reading and researching near-death experiences. And it was like my whole world just flipped. Everything made sense. Like I felt like I was remembering things, things that I already knew and it changed everything. Yeah. It's so beautiful, isn't it? (laughs) Yeah. So that led you into, was it past life regression that you did first or how did that get started for you? Yeah. So, um, two things I'll, I'll go through them, uh, a little quicker. (laughs) Um, so I ended up, uh, during the, my early thirties, I was just finishing up university and I got into the corporate world and I was working for corporate. And then I just had this, you know, my soul was just like, no, <laughs> this is not happening. You're not doing this. So my life kind of took a big turn. Um, I ended up with anxiety, depression, a a crazy sleeping disorder and I just stopped my life right to to bring in that self-care that I needed and so because I wasn't working during that time I was you know uh, healing in a sense um I did hypnosis you know I had people in my life that were hypnotists and they helped me get through a lot of that anxiety, depression, and sleep stuff. So then I decided to retrain in hypnosis. And um, so I retrained as a hypnotherapist. And during my training, I had that vision that I spoke about earlier. So that was my, that was the pivotal point for the, uh, past life regression and life between lives. So would you like me to talk about that? Um, Yes. Yes. I would love to, if you're, if you're comfortable with it. Yeah. I think, I think this is the first time I've spoken about it. So I think, um, I think it's time (laughs) to talk about it. So I was, I was retraining to be a hypnotherapist. And during my training, we did what is called self-hypnosis. So uh, we learned how to do our own hypnosis and so in one of these sessions I had this it it felt like an out-of-body experience a visual a very um uh in-depth visual more than you know when you have your eyes closed and you you know imagine a beach this was very colorful it was almost like I was right there And so I wound up in this visual, I wound up in a meadow, this beautiful meadow with mountains as backdrop. And um, I'll preface this by saying I didn't, I wasn't raised uh, in any religion whatsoever. Um, But for some reason, uh, Jesus was there. Um, And he looked at me and smiled and I looked over to my left and there was all these people there. Um, I didn't recognize any of them, but there was just lots and lots of people there. And then out of nowhere, I saw these people and it was like, I was seeing all my past lives with them, you know, karmic resolution kind of stuff. And so this, I mean, when you see that many past lives, that much stuff going on, uh, it was kind of jarring, right? It was a little jolting. (laughs) So I kind of, uh, for lack of a better term, like popped back out of that visual, back into my chair. I I opened my eyes at that point. And I just said to myself, okay, I I gotta go back and figure out what this is, (laughs) right? And so I closed my eyes and I was back there amazingly. Um, And Jesus was now, he was with me still. And the people had 
returned, but they were all lined up to my left. And I was standing kind of in front of them to the side. And Jesus would, he was beside me on my right. And he would hand me this beautiful blue stone or crystal. I'm not sure what it is still, but this beautiful stone or crystal. And I would take that and I would turn to the person in the lineup and I would place it in their heart center. And I, I still, you know, I'm, I'm not quite sure what it all means still, um, but I would go along and along and along in the lineup and keep placing this blue uh, stone or <laughs> crystal in these people's heart center. So I came out of that visual back to the room that I was studying in. And it was kind of, it was, a, it was the end of the day. And I, um, I drove home and on that drive home, I remember being suddenly like, like I said to you, like so connected, so connected so connected that I was having this kind of hilarious back and forth in my mind with source or God or Jesus, I'm not sure. But, and, and then, or it <laughs> saying to me, you know, um, talking about being healthy in all kinds of ways, food, drink, exercise, that kind of stuff. And how that being healthy was so important in order to keep that connection going, right? So after that day, the next morning I woke up and it was like I was a, I was just no fear, no fear for me, right? Um, cloud nine, <laughs> this elated feeling of connection. And, you know, I had heard about this type of connection before, you know, intellectually, you can think about it and go, okay, well, maybe it's out there. But to actually experience it like you did as well, that elated feeling, you just know that it's there. And now it's an emotional thing. And you go, okay, this is, this is for real, right? And so I kind of, in a sense, handed over my days to the universe and just yeah when when I had a thought to eat properly I ate properly you know <laughs> I would I would say okay is this good for me no okay I'll stay away from it <laughs> there was no ifs ands or buts <laughs> about it um and that stayed uh for a while it stayed for um a month a month and a bit and, um, and then, <laughs> like I said, I went on vacation and in that vacation, you know, your eating changed, your drinking habits changed a little bit. And, um, that elated feeling sort of s slipped away. However, um, the, the, the letting go of fear, the letting go of, you know, jealousies and, um, all, all the kinds of different fears and self-judgments that we have in our lives, usually, they were dissipated still. So the, the uh, elated feeling um, dissipated, but that the fears and all that were, were gone as well, right? So yeah, that was an amazing time in my life. And now, uh, years later, that, that fear and everything is still gone. So that's nice. <laughs> so that, that led me into going, okay, I want to do life between lives and life, uh, past life regression. And so then I trained in all those modalities as well. Thank you so much for sharing that experience. I just have an like unrelated side question yeah, that yeah. I'm really curious about. Did the, did God or whoever you were communicating with give you any specific advice on diet and how to care for your body? 
Yes. So, um, uh, not like certain foods or anything, that kind of thing, but just staying away from sugars, staying away from alcohols, um, uh, just being kind, being kind to your body. Um, and it's amazing because I really wasn't that healthy. And I had no idea that a couple months later, there would be a pandemic, right? And so um, I was very healthy suddenly moving into the pandemic. So I'm very grateful that that, that came up as well at that time. But yeah, working out, be mindful and asking. Asking was a big thing. So if I had two foods in front of me, I would say, okay, you know, should I eat this? Yes, no, no, okay. Should I eat this? Yes, okay, I'll eat that, right? So just listening to your higher self in a sense, just listening, not, not living unconsciously, but living consciously. That makes that it mean? a lot more simple, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you just gotta ask. <laughs> so would you like to share a little bit more about what you do and then we'll get into some specific questions? Yeah, sure. Um, so I work, um, I work in the realm of anxiety and people feeling stuck in life. Um, that's besides past life regression and life between lives. Um, but those three realms, so, so a realm being anxiety, feeling stuck, um, that's, that's kind of my wheelhouse there. And then the next one would be life between lives. And I work with people. It's quite a long session. Um, people go, usually they like to mix it up. So they'll reach out to me for a past life regression. And I'll say, okay, well, you know, we can do a couple past lives. And if you want in that session, we can put in some life between lives because that's a nice transition, right? So then they get to speak to their guides to source their higher self, as well as have these learnings from their past lives. A lot of people come to me wanting past lives, number one, for the fun experience, right? Because it's quite the experience. Um, and number two, they want to kind of understand patterns in their life, whether it's emotional patterns, relationship, health, that kind of stuff. Like where, is that something I'm holding on to from a past life? Maybe, you know, and, and, um, and then we go into the life between lives and then they can ask much larger questions, right? It's kind of like having a fountain of knowledge at your fingertips and you can ask any question <laughs> right, when you get there. But yeah, that's kind of the three things that I mainly deal with, um, uh, specializing in helping people release anxieties and move forward in their life with confidence and, um, and uh, yeah, letting go of stuff that is bothering them. And then the life between lives and the past life regression. Do you also regress near-death experiencers back to their experience? I think I remember hearing you yes. say that. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So thank you for reminding me that. Um, so if somebody has had an NDE, sometimes they'll reach out to me if they want to say re-experience, re-experience that love, re-experience that connection. Um, uh, sometimes they reach out to me because they want to, they, there's a gap in their remembering and they know there's a gap there. It's like they're, they're just not remembering everything. And so we'll go there and see if anything is there. Um, and most of the time there is, it's amazing. <laughs> it really is amazing. Um, and also reintegration. So a lot of NDEers, as you know, have a hard time, you know, as, as wonderful a lot of the time as the experience is, a lot of NDEers have a hard time reintegrating into the body. So 
you know, they have one foot in and one foot out, um, if you know what I mean. And so there's a process there to help them reintegrate into their body. Um, and also what I've added to the NDE regression is a part where um, at the end, we um, bring the guide, a guide forward, and they get to ask questions if they have any questions about, you know, why this happened to them, or, or, you know, if, if any loose ends are hanging for them, that's where they can ask questions to their guide, their higher self, whoever comes forward for them. All right, well, that sounds incredible. I had a, what they call spiritually transformative experience, when I was around the age of 18. And I can't remember most of it, but it's not like it was because they said, no, you're not allowed to. It was, I literally felt it fall out of my head as I came back into my body. It was like, it couldn't fit in my consciousness. So it would be so cool to go back and see if maybe I could remember some of that. Recover some of that information. Yeah. Yeah.